Hello and welcome to this edition of our AWS podcast series, Innovation Ambassadors. I'm Sarah Armstrong, and as Senior Manager for Worldwide Prototyping at AWS, along with my AWS co-hosts from around the world, we'll act as your ambassadors to some of the most interesting engagements with our AWS Solutions Architecture prototyping teams. Every episode, we provide you with a roadmap to innovation in technology solutions. We're so glad you joined us on this journey. On this episode of Innovation Ambassadors, we're showcasing the digital transformation journey of Kona, global leader in the elevator and escalator industry, and their mission to improve the flow of urban life. We'll hear about their collaborative efforts with the AWS prototyping team to create 3D representations of physical spaces using AWS digital twin and cloud services to build safe, efficient, and sustainable people flow experiences. I'm excited to welcome Yuhamati Kusinen, Head of Digital Innovation at Kona. Thanks for being with us here today, Yuhamati. Thank you, Sarah. Excited to be here. And also from Kona, we have Yari Karhu, Senior Lead Data Scientist. Yari, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me, and I'm really also excited to join this podcast. And from our prototyping team in Europe, we have Amir Yahar, Senior Prototyping Engineer. Always great to catch up with you, Amir. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, everyone. I'm happy to be here with you. And you, Mati, maybe for our international audience, you can tell us a little bit about Kone. Well, Kone is a global leader in the elevator and escalator industry. We are here to improve the flow of urban life by helping our customers to make the best of the world's cities, buildings, and public spaces. We have an important role in making cities better places to live for every one of us, for our children and generations to come. And our vision is to create the best people flow experience. This covers a variety of actions we do when it comes to people flow, such as co-creation and innovation with our customers and partners, people flow planning and design, and manufacturing, maintaining, and modernizing elevators and escalators. And I feel that our topic today is a great example of delivering on this vision, as we have developed together with Emir and the team a digital twin solution that helps our customers to tackle people flow bottlenecks in, uh, for example, metro stations which are the backbone of efficient transportation in many large cities. Yari, tell us a little bit more about this digital twin vision that you all have. Yeah, and I can actually start by by giving a concrete example as well, that why does this kind of a people flow matter uh, for for every one of us? So uh, when my now four-year-old was still needing a kind of a baby stroller, there were a few times on our local train station when the elevator was not serving. As it is the only elevator, the only route down to the street are these sliding rails by the stairs. And to be honest, you think twice before wheeling down with the stroller baby on board uh, on those. So it's especially like, you know, winter time here in Finland when it's slippery and, and, and such things. So luckily, all, always in these situations, we were always two. So the other one could take the baby and the other one took the empty stroller down. But I mean that this is a good example of that even in this kind of a remote and less busy station, if, if there are problems with the elevators or escalators, they might mean a lot for those people living around. So people flow do matter for every one of us. Absolutely. I think many of our listeners with children or even who have mobility challenges themselves can relate to that type of experience. So how did you come to work with Amir and his team at AWS? Well, we had this uh, vision to build a digital twin for people flow. As we are partnering with AWS, we came to know that they have this kind of a engagement prototyping team that you can join with and have a joint project with them. So basically, we have a partnering team here in Kone. So I got contacted with them and, and then, then they sorted out with the AWS that, you know, we could have this uh, super team from AWS to help us to, to build the first prototype. And you, Hamati, maybe you can set the context for us of what were the key things we were trying to achieve during this prototype? Well, we wanted to make a dream come true and, and we were successful. And, and that dream was this people for digital win that would help building owners, facility management companies to, to operate buildings better, more efficiently. And, and of course, uh, in the way that would improve the uh, end user experience and safety and eventually to help improve the flow of urban life. So Amir, take us from there. How did you start the process of determining how we would scope a six-week engagement to realize this dream, this vision that Kone had? One of the key things we did with Kone is essentially 
our famous working backwards process. Simply re uh, skipped all the technical discussions, all the implementation details, and just focused on what the Cones users, Cones customers need to have, need to see, or need to interact with. And during this process, also AWS Digital Innovations team also helped us a lot. And simply, we defined all the user personas with what they need to experiment and experience. So we worked backwards from that requirements, and then we defined the digital twin concept and applications and the solution. You may wondering what what do we mean when we say digital twin? It may sound so futuristic, but actually. It has really physical and available results and outcomes. And it's not that invisible. So simply, when we say digital twin, it is a 3D representation of, in Kone's case, it's physical places, stations, uh, buildings, and other physical places that people follow. And that digital representations will be fed with data streams, data sources. So at the result, the end user sees a digital twin built by a 3D representation of the real physical thing and showing the data coming from the real world. So take us through some of the key architectural decisions that you made along the way, Amir. First, even from the beginning of the prototype, Kone teams and Yohamad Tiyari and the other teammates in the prototyping team was sharing a goal of having a scalable, a repeatable solution. So this was our one of our primary objectives. And also, we choose a path with AWS managed services, which means serverless services, which allows our customers to focus on their business logic and their actual code instead of maintaining uh, the infrastructure and taking care of it behind. So we took a scalable approach, we took a repeatable approach, and we also took a serverless approach overall on the architecture. Regarding the whole end-to-end flow, we choose the AWS IoT TwinMaker service, which is also a serverless one, which allows our customers to build and model their digital twins, as I described the term and the modules of a digital twin. So at the end, Kone was connecting their data sources from different hardwares, different data points they have, and then modeling their digital twin entities in TwinMaker. And at the last, having a 3D visualization of physical spaces with collecting all the data and visualizing all the different data from different sources. And you, Amati, that scalability so important from the very beginning. Yes, that was one of the uh, key design principles and an an inspiring goal also to build a platform that you would be able to set up uh, automatically by a click of a button, basically. That is really a, a key requirement if you consider scaling to hundreds or, or thousands of buildings. So you need to be able to automatically deploy without too much a manual configuration. And Yari, talk to us a little bit about the insights that you want to draw from the data that are coming through these various devices and systems. The whole whole idea here is that we can give insights to the end users of, of the solution. And I could maybe uh, divide this to two categories. So the other one being the kind of real-time insights, which means a lot for the people who are, for example, in the operation room, following up what happens on the station. So they need to make decisions fast. Trains go by, you know, metro trains, they go by three minutes. So basically, you have one minute to make a decision then you need to have a tool where you get the overall understanding what is happening on the station and also that we can overlay some of the insights on on that view to ease up the decision making for those people. The other category is the maybe longer term insights that you understand what is happening on the station. Does it function as it has been planned and then 
when the world around changes, you know, there are new shopping centers coming, built up by the station, or there's a sports arena built by one of the stations, then people flow around that station changes, and it doesn't anymore reflect what was it when, when the actual station was planned, and then and the people flow was planned for that station. So you need to react on those, and then that operator, he needs insights about what to do and, and how to make the station perform better. And the ability to sort of look at patterns over time that you might not be obvious to a human just being there, maybe not at different times, those operators. Yeah. Exactly. The, the people flow is kind of, you know, complicated thing. So it, it, people might go to the station for various rules and then they, it takes long for them to, to go from the exit or entry to the metro platform. So it is not that obvious to, to understand what is happening when, they, when they're doing that sort of it's a great example that you really need to need to have those patterns and insights to understand what is happening. Amir, tell us a little bit about the architectural decisions you made on storing that data, how we're making that accessible and available. Exactly. So as we use the working backwards principle, we use the same approach here as well. So simply we choose what type of data we need to visualize for the users and also not only for the digital twin users, but also we identified a few more user personas like control room members or the operations teams in the Kone, uh, which they will take care of the overall digital twin application health. So we identified what kind of data sources we need to provide in the digital twin. So we worked backwards from there and we used AWS IoT Twin Maker for modeling all these data sources and all these data connections. And we use out of the box visualization features from IoT Twin Maker. But also, we implemented some custom web applications that also visualizes at different versions of the same digital twin. We used a time series database which allows you to store sensor style data with timestamps in a database. It's a purpose built for time series and sensor data, which is AWS time stream. So all those components are on the digital twin data aspect side. But also I would like to mention the point uh, Yuhamati explained. Simply we made all the digital twin deployment available via a code pipeline. You know, we often talk in our podcast when we're talking about experimentation or Yuhamati, as you put it, uh, you know, sort of realizing that dream, right, of doing something new. We talk about that not really being always a straightforward path, that sometimes there's challenges in the way. Yari, what were some of the particular challenges that we had during this engagement or even surprises that we had to overcome? In these kind of projects, you typically you have kind of surprises and challenges when, when you make a six-week engagement project, you need to be really fast. You don't have time to get to know each other and then you need to start making decisions. So as an example, I could pick up what Emir was saying about making the decision that we will strictly follow this rule that we implement everything by code, which was crucial for this project. So I remember that we, we did that actually the day one and then we barely know each other. And then making those kind of tough decisions right in the beginning of the project is, is, is always an interesting. And then this is what's the life is in Agile project that you need to be able to do those decisions. And regardless that maybe not everyone is right from the beginning happy with that decision. I'm very happy that we did that decision because it proved to be the right one and, and was one of the key factors to make this project successful. Yuhamantia, it's a theme that we often talk about that digital transformation often comes right alongside cultural organizational transformation, doesn't it? Yes, definitely. And and we have been on a journey, on a digital transformation journey at Kone for some time and now the work is starting to pay off. In this prototyping engagement, I think that we were able to say go and, and solve issues thanks to agile ways of working and thanks to a committed team. And I cannot put enough emphasis on the fact that we were successful thanks to a very committed team. So Yari, share with us where you are now. We had this six-week engagement. Sounds like it was successful. What's the next step in your journey? We want to build this digital twin for the real station and, and get the real station alive in this digital world. 
And actually today I was, I was having a customer visit and then also was lucky to visit the actual monitoring room where people would be using the solution. It was really interesting. To be honest, I've never seen such a many screens in one room that I saw. So, And then those people, they are monitoring those screens all the time. And with these kind of solutions, we can maybe bring them this kind of a holistic view of the station so that instead of them spotting out everything from those screens, they can, you know, just see it from that one digital twin and, and then get this clever insight saying that, okay, there's something wrong on that end of the station and, and we need to react on that now. That is our goal now to, to get it live in the, in the real environment. And you know, Mati, you were explaining earlier that there's a sustainability angle here, isn't there? Yes, there's sustainability angle, many, many sustainability angles, I would say. It's about making uh, stations, buildings adaptable so that they last long. We don't need to demolish them. And that's already a sustainability thing. And, and then, of course, we can help our customers to save energy, reduce CO2 emissions. And I, I guess that's a lot about sustainability and making our buildings last longer so that they, they can serve their purpose longer and, and in the way that people actually enjoy. Well said. Well, Ihamati, Yari, Amir, thank you so much for being on our program today and for sharing your journey with us. Amir, I'll just start with you. I was wondering if you would share some reflections that you had out of this engagement. The nature of experimentations and iterations, I think that was one of the key things during the prototype because... Even if we focused on the final customer outcomes or final customer experience, we always need to iterate what we're offering. So what we did is we made a version, we made a demo, and we got feedbacks from different personas, and then we made one another iteration. And then one another demo, actually we did a demo each week during the prototype. And then we got more feedback and more iterations. And at the final, even just a short time frame, like six weeks, we had a great laser-focused solution that works very well for current requirements. Yari, how about you? What were your key takeaways from this experience? When you develop something that, you know, not all technologies yet mature, and then Digital Twin being a great example of that, we can think of building a digital twin for the factory. That's for one factory, it's it's kind of standard semi-project to do. We have been doing, those has been done already for a few years. But then when you think of scaling that digital twin to hundreds or thousands of customers, it's a whole nother challenge. And when you are dealing with this kind of challenge, it's important that you don't fix to the kind of existing paradigm how to do things, but you need to be willing to take risk and, and then like Emir was saying, the key is also the kind of iterations and the agile development that we have been talking here a lot. So that will be, you know, the way to be successful on, on these kind of projects. And we were lucky to be somehow successful already on, on this prototyping based on those principles. And you, Hamati, final words from you. I would say that uh, this type of collaboration or engagement may help you, uh, as in our case, to make dreams come true. And that's something great to see happen. Yuhamati, Yari, Amir, thank you for being here with us today and sharing your thoughts. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. You can hear more about Kona's mission in their Flow of Urban Life podcast. There's a link in the description of this episode. I'd like to thank our listeners for coming on today's journey with us. Innovation Ambassadors is a production of the AWS Media Series. Look for future episodes of our vodcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or your favorite streaming platform. If you have ideas for future episodes or comments on this one, send us a tweet at hashtag AWS Innovation Ambassadors and share your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you.